today, today, as from today, we are going to declare as a people, we are going to say no as a people. We are going to say no because this cannot continue. We are going to say no because this has, not, has, has, has been going on for many years. We have, we have, we have been, we have been talking about talking, but the time has come now for us to decide as a people. We have to continue to do something as from today that will change the history of our country. We are going to declare no. We are going to say no because we cannot continue like this as a people. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We are going to say no to every Nigerian that has ruled us before now. As a people, we must say no to insecurity. We must say no to killing and mass burial in Nigeria. We must say no to disenfranchisement. We must say no to corruption, no to election rigging, no to murderous henchmen and their bandits, no to political godfatherism, no to Boko Haram, no to unsteady ele electricity supply. We are going to say no to inadequate health care facilities. We are going to say no to politicians who travel abroad for health care, no to delay in the payment of salaries and pensions, no to budget padding, no to the detention of Nigerians without trial, no to those that continue to undermine our voices as a people. We are going to say no to recycled leaders, no to indiscriminate allocation of oil blocks, no to the continuing environmental degradation. The time has come to say no to abandoned projects, no to political toggery, no to bogus salary for federal legislators and their executives, no to religious leaders that have led us astray and, and, and keep quiet to bad governance, no to state electoral commissions manipulated by state governors. We say no and no to whatever has held us down as a people, as from today, any politicians you see anywhere, especially the faith politicians, just shout no. Wherever you see any politician as from today, begin to shout no. Keep shouting no. Don't stop shouting no. By the powers vested on me as the global coordinator of the European Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria, I, Frederick Omoyo Maldurige, today, the 15th day of May 2018, respectfully, but with a sense of national urgency, ask all Nigerians, home and abroad, to join us as we formally declare our second independence from Nigerian rulers, past and present, from local to the federal level, in line with our no campaign. This revolution is called revolution without ammunitions. In this revolution, we shall not preach hate. No tire will be burnt on our streets. No house or property must be burnt. No single Nigeria must die. But we must be free as a, as a people. You are not permitted to do anything violent or illegal in the course of this revolution. But there can never be peace until politicians replace the law for power with the power to love country. This non-violent resistance is based on the Nigerian Constitution, Section 41, Subsection 1 of 1999, that guarantees the right to freedom of movement. Chapter C23, Section 40 of 2004, equally empowers us with the right to free assembly and association for the protection of our interests. This is the day Nigerians have been waiting for since we were born as Nigerians. Revolution is that necessary battle that must be fought between our present and our past. Together, we can achieve this lifetime opportunity of a revolution. In the words of Emma Goldman, no real social change has ever been brought about without the revolution. Revolution is thought transferred into action. We base this revolution on the motto of our country, unity and faith, peace and progress. Today, there is no peace in Nigeria. Today, there is no unity in Nigeria because there is no faith in country. There is no peace because there is no progress. And today, it will come to an end. Today, the 15th day of May, 
2018 is a day that people are going to read in history as far as Nigeria is concerned. Because we are going to we are going to carry out this revolution in a way that even our politicians will find a way of escape. But we are not going to be violent about it. It's going to be legal and thorough. Today we advocate for unity, not a breakup. We advocate for peace, not violence. We advocate for unity of country, not hopelessness. We advocate progress, not stagnation. We shall achieve this with steadfast commitment of all and sundry. From the woman friend in Akarina Braka to the cat pusher in Ajengule, from the keke driver in, in Ebute Meta to the sweat drenched bricklayer in Lokoja, from the hard working banker who must close late from work to all market men and women, traders in goods and services, from the unemployed Nigerian youth whose destiny has been truncated by a tiny political cabal to all other energetic Nigerian workforce. We call on Nigerian students to wake up now and luta continua. Victoria Sate. Nigeria call obey. We call on all faithfuls of all religions, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Jews, pagans, traditionalists to arise today by joining this revolution. We call on all patriotic Nigerian soldiers and gallant police officers, Navy, Air Force, Immigration, and all other security agencies who continue to risk their lives for Nigeria with nothing to show for it. Take off your uniforms when you are not on duty and join the revolution. Wherever there is a street protest, we all go to the same market and bear the same pain. How long will you continue to escort those that have stolen from you? Our soldiers and police officers, they risk their lives for country, but country has made them poorer. Many have died fighting Boko Haram because few persons stole money meant for the procurement of ammunition. Why must Nigerians continue to borrow before their next salary? Why? Together we must set our country free. The freedom of Nigeria will equally mark the beginning of freedom for other African countries that experience the same misrule. Our statements today are by a people for a people towards the greatness of a people. Enough of talking about talking. We refuse to continue to endure the embarrassment that comes with our stigmatized Nigerian passports because of failed leadership. We, Nigerians, demand independence from you, Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, because you forcefully ruled us with the barrel of the gun, allegedly spirited away $12.4 billion Gulf War windfall, and you canceled the fairest Nigerian election of June 12, 1993. Since then, Nigerian elections have never been the same. You entered power through coup, but two, on two occasions you killed 62 alleged coup plotters who tried to topple you. Today, you receive life pension as a former coup plotter turned head of state. Why must a coup plotter who forced his rulership on us with the same guns bought by the taxpayers' money Receive life pension in the name of former head of state. Error. Unacceptable. We, Nigerians, demand independence from the family of Abacha because of the monies your father stole from us. That is what you are all, all enjoying now. The one they are bringing from abroad, those are just part of it. We, Nigerians, demand independence from you, General Abdul Salami Abubakar. You stayed for a short term, but we know about your $182 million Alibotin bribery scandal and the, and the location of your properties in London. Our coalition will get there. We Nigerians demand independence from you, Matthew Aremu Okikiola Olushegu on passenger, for the six billion liquefied natural gas contract bribe in Boni, the Transcorp share scandal. The 16 billion USD electrification that was never accounted for. The Alibotin scandal. The Malabu oil scandal. The imposition of candidates and disenfranchisement of Nigerians between 1999 and 2007. Away with your coalition for Nigerian movement nonsense and your political party. Obasanjo left prison with 20,000 naira. But today his story is different. Obasanjo you shall no longer choose rulers for us 
because you want to remain politically, politically relevant. We must elect leaders by ourselves. Any aspirant that aligns with Obasanjo for the 2019 elections should consider him or herself FOA, failed on arrival. The same group of persons that have, that have drained our country. Obasanjo did everything to try to change our constitution because he wanted the third term in office. Unacceptable. He even gave the Senate and House of uh, Representatives mem uh, members 50, 50 million naira and 40 million uh, naira each, respectively. They leave office and they turn emergency human rights activists and nationalists. Obasanjo, what did you do with your eight years in office? The only Nigerian with the appellation PPP, President, Prisoner, President, the most opportune Nigerian president alive that ought to have transformed Nigeria. God, God miraculously brought you out of prison when Abacha wanted to kill you. You were graciously given an, an, an opportunity to change our country. But you could neither reform the prison nor reform the society. We need our freedom from you now and it is now. We are taking it by force. We, Nigerians, demand independence from the family of Musa Yaradwa for the sums of money allegedly paid directly from NNPC into Musa's bank account. We, Nigerians, demand independence from you, Jonathan Goodluck, for the $20 billion that was un unaccounted for by NNPC, the $2.2 billion illegally withdrawn from SS crude oil accounts, for the $1 billion approved to fund your re-election campaign, the $11.6 billion that disappeared from Nigeria, from the Nigerian NLG company, the 16 million barrel of oil valued at 13.7 billion that was stolen under your watch, the 11.63 billion paid to NNPC without remittance to the federal government account, the 60% of $1 billion dollars foreign loans obtained from the Chinese by the Minister of Finance. For the misuse of 3 trillion naira defense budget under the guise of fighting Boko Haram. Diversion of 2.2 million dollars vaccination medicine funded by the Minister of, of Health. Today, Nigerians have been killed because you and your cohorts diverted money that was meant to equip our, our, our army into your re-election campaign. Did you finally win the election? The blood of all those killed because of the lack of security in our country is on your head. Whoever shared in that money that is leading to our soldiers and our police officers and, and, and Nigerians being killed by Boko Haram because you pocketed that money, their blood is on your head. Jonathan Goodluck considered defeat in the last election. That does not make him a saint. It is not about having a, a smiling face. God knows the heart of man. There was no way we would have had two presidents at the same time. Jonathan could not even control his wife, Patience, who currently has huge corruption charges hanging around her neck for looting. Today, she's, used, she's using her loot to hire lawyers against Nigeria. Perchance even had the temerity to lie that her loot was from a late mother who had neither job nor any legitimate business. Perchance was just warehousing proceeds of unlawful transactions using domestic staff of government as to front for her. Days ago, the court has ordered that billions of naira that she stole and some of her assets should be seized and forfeited to the federal government was Patience Faka Jonathan, the first first lady. Abinole Shiwakakon. Today, such a person will enter a public meeting with higher talks and you are hailing her, Mama Peace, Mama Peace, after tearing our economy to pieces. 
Do you know, do you know what that money should have done for the development of Rivers and Bayesa State? Today, young men from those states have become militants because, because their relative stole them into poverty. Just see how these people ruined our country. You think that every Nigerian that lives abroad today is happy living abroad? Many want to return home, but return to what? Insecurity and darkness? No! Our light must shine. We state categorically and without any equivocation whatsoever that all Nigerian former heads of state or president, whatever they call themselves, and some of their wives, they deserve to be in prison. All of you, we respect your age. You are all elders, but none of you are elder statesmen. We, Nigerians, demand independence from you, Muhammad Buhari, for failing to keep to your, your, your election campaign promises on security and the economy. This is not change. It is short-changing. On Mondays, Nigerians are slaughtered and, 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 and we cry, but nothing happens. On Tuesday, more Nigerians are slaughtered. We cry again, but quickly forget those that were killed on Monday. Then Wednesday, ushers new massacres, and those butchered on Monday and Tuesdays are quickly forgotten. Nigerians say no. Where there is no security, there is no government. We, we don't have a government. We can't miss words about that. There is no government. There's no security. There's no welfare. And that is the primary aim of governance. We have no sovereignty. Our borders are porous. We cannot continue like that as a people. It is not enough for, 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 for President Muhammadu Buhari to tell Donald Trump that the ex-men are Libyan rebels killing Nigerians. Please! Is that how Trump reports to you when there are gun attacks in America? You are the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria with power over air, land and sea. A retired army gen general for that matter. Locate the terrorists, blast and grind them to pieces before you report to anybody. Even Trump said that Christians are being killed in Nigeria. Why did you not cor correct him? It's that it's not only Christians that are being killed in Nigeria. Muslims are being killed too. Pagans are being killed too. In January 2018, 73 Nigerians were killed in Benway State. President Buhari keeps quiet. Same month, 25 killed in Nasarawa. President Buhari keeps quiet and his spokesperson speak. Then many more are killed. Same January, 53 killed in Taraba State. The president keeps quiet. Thereafter, policemen were killed in Benway State again. Six killed in Adamawa, 15 killed in Plateau, nine killed, killed in Beni Gwari in Kaduna State. In February, eight killed in Obi Nasarawa, 12 killed in Kajura, Kaduna State, 20 killed in Demsa, Adamawa. In March, 15 killed in Saraduna, Taraba, then another 20. The president keeps quiet and his spokesman speaks. We are talking about human beings here. In March, 25 killed in Benway again, 11 in Plateau, then another nine, then another 26. The president keeps quiet. Then 32 killed in Kogi, 50 killed in Ofa, Kwara. Our eyes are red, but we refuse to cry. In April, four killed in Bali, 51 killed in Wukari, Taraba, 78 in Nasarawa, 31 again in Benway, then 19, then 38, then 78. Persons. The list is on and on. And the president keeps quiet and we never visit the scenes of incidents. But he continues his campaign for a second term in office. Resign. Buari resign. Resign. The so-called much advertised integrity is good, but not enough. We do not need a push and start president. Nigeria urgently needs a president that is active, proactive, responsive, 
intellectually capable and in tune with universal trend. A leader with capacity for quick decision making. One that will not embarrass Nigerians whenever he opens his mouth to speak in an outside country. We need goal getters and goal, goal setters. A president who can work within post haste time frames. A generation of new leaders. Resign, Buhari, if you cannot do your job. You have lost control of the territory of Nigeria. It is you that wanted to be president. Are you even aware of many things going on in your government? We need a functioning government in Nigeria, not a government run by spokesmen and, spokes, uh, and online spokeswomen. They killed in, 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 in Adamawa and Buhari spokesman called it barbaric and nothing happened. They killed in Benue and Buhari spokesperson called it satanic and nothing happened. They killed in Kaduna, Buhari spokesman called it evil and nothing happened. Buhari resigned, resigned. Resign before they kill the rest of us. You are too weak to run in Nigeria after today. Must all Nigerians die because you are focusing on the second term? Now it is very clear that it was a diagonal that even made you popular during your reign as military head of state. Which country in this world will accept the president to continue in office with the ongoing genocide, with sites of mass barriers dotting our geographical landscape? Buhari even defended as many in, in America that they do not carry guns. Ha! Ah. Buhari, are you talking about the evil, murderous Elsmen we know or the Elsmen you want Donald Trump to believe? We, Nigerians, demand independence from you, Bukola Saraki, Yakubu Dogora, and your gang of federal legislators, legislators who padded and continue to pad our national budgets. They craftily appropriate mind-blowing earnings to themselves when Nigerians die in hunger and slaughter in their farms. They even delay national budgets because they expect to be bribed. Now, Nigerian senators appropriate to themselves 3 billion naira earnings every year. Multiply 3 billion by the 109 senators and it amounts to 327 billion in one year. Now, multiply that amount by their four years in office, and it amounts to 1 trillion 308 billion naira. Divide that amount again by the 36 states of Nigeria, and each state will get 36 billion 332 million 333,000 naira. That amount, that amount can build 18 hospitals in each of the 36 states of the Federation. If we estimate that an hospital will cost 2 billion naira each, if the contracts of building such hospitals are not awarded to legislators. They deny us of these facilities, but when they are ill, they fly abroad for treatment, taking our money to pay hospital bills in foreign countries. The senator summoned the inspector general of police recently. Just because Dino Melaye, their colleague, was arrested. Later, they, 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 they said, okay, they, are, they, they were calling him or summoning him because of the killings in Nigeria. Why did you not summon the, you know, uh, the IG when the killing was going on? Why did you summon him just because Melaye was killed? Uh, sorry, was, 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 was uh, arrested. He will not be killed. Our people are, they have been killing our people. Our people were killed. You, went, you, did, not, you did not call the IG. You close plenary session. And what happened? The IG, police IG, refused to go. Why? Because even the IG knows that our Senate is dead. We don't need them. They are wasteful. We cannot continue like this as a people. We don't need, this. We don't need senators in Nigeria. As of reps, it's okay. 
We Nigerians demand independence from you, godfathers of Nigerian politics. You sit at your home, you select candidates, you impoverish us in the name of godfathers. That is why we have all these bad leaders, leaders everywhere. Rulers, I beg your pardon. Because they are not leaders, they are rulers. We, we don't need any godfather. If you don't withdraw for your godfatherism business, we are going to name you state by state. Godfathers are demons in Nigeria. Godfatherism must die in Nigeria. By imposing a ruler on me to represent me without my consent, you are tempering with my will and rights, and it is unacceptable. And Godfathers will sit at home because they have put people in positions of authority. Every month they'll be paid money. Money meant for development. One person will be putting it in his pocket in the name of Godfather. And some of these Godfathers are past governors or traditional rulers or people that are just rich. Especially past governors. Because they want to continue to remain politically relevant. We, Nigerians, demand independence from Nigerian governors and the executives for appropriating running costs and earnings that have made us poor as a people. If we, if we are asking Britain to return our artifacts stolen since 1897, we are equally justified to ask Nigerian politicians to refund what they stole 30 years ago. Rulers came with their guns and we surrendered. They came with their false electoral promises and we surrendered. Henceforth, we refused to surrender. No retreat, no surrender. Now, how do we carry out this revolution? Action plan. This is TTP. Tactics, techniques, and procedures. Fellow Nigerians, let us understand the purpose of this revolution very clear. We have 12 points agenda in this revolution. In other words, why are we having this revolution? One. We are demanding that all forms of massacre of Nigerians must stop now. And the killers and their sponsors produced by the Nigerian government to face the law. No democracy can succeed without security. Two, we demand that ex-men carrying ammunition while grazing must be declared as terrorist groups. We are not interested in where they are coming from. Three, we demand that the heads of all security agencies should be overhauled with immediate effect, with consideration to federal character. Four, we are giving ultimatum to Ibrahim Babangida, Abdul Salam Abubakar, the families of Abut Abacha and Yaradwa, Olusha Guon Basanjo, Jonathan Goodluck, to refund what they looted from Nigeria. We also demand that Muhammadu Buhari the face of anti-corruption in Africa should publish what is spent on his health in the United Kingdom from the Treasury of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are not asking him to disclose his health condition or the problems that he has. We are simply asking him to disclose what his ailment has cost the Treasury of Nigeria because he's fighting corruption. Number five, we are asking Senator Bukola Saraki and his gang of legislators who appropriated salaries to themselves outside the laws of Nigeria to refund our money starting from 9th of June 2015 when the current 8th assembly of legislators were sworn into office. Number six, we demand that any legislator that has any criminal case in court, forgery, drugs, looting, robbery, kidnapping, etc., must be suspended by the House until the court concludes their cases. You cannot suspend your fellow legislators because of their utterances while you allow criminals to sit at the assembly to make laws for us. It was after my address to President Buhari in February 2018 that the member of the House of Representatives representing Kiru Bebeji Federal Constituency in Kano State, Abdul Mumin Jubrin, was recalled to his legislative duties after being on suspension for one year and four months. How can you deny a constituency of, the, of, of representation? Why? 
because Jubril exposed the padding of the national budget. He accused the speaker, Yakubu Dogara, Deputy Speaker, speaker Lasun Yusuf, and the Chief Whip, Al Hassan Ado Doguwa, and the Minority Leader, Leo Ogo, of padding the 2016 budget with over 30 billion Naira constituency projects. It is easy to say that you are innocent until proven guilty, but as far as you could suspend others for talking, you must equally suspend those with criminal cases in court. Number seven, we demand that the Nigerian Senate should be dissolved before the next Nigerian election. Nigerians can no longer afford their salaries, emoluments, clothes, newspapers, furniture allowances, and other cost of oversight functions. We need only the House of Representatives. Underline this. Nigerians must not vote for any candidate in the next senatorial election of 2019. Whoever is campaigning to be a senator in 2019 should join the many unemployed Nigerian youth to search for job now. No voting for senatorial aspirants next year. If they give you ballot paper to vote for senators in 2019, take the paper, enter your polling booth and write no, N-O, N-O, write it on your ballot paper and drop it in the ballot box. If you, do not, if you do not have a pen with you, just turn print on it in many places so that it will be declared invalid. What would they count if there, if there are no votes? That is why this is revolution without ammunition. We are going to speak to all Nigerians every month on the 15th. We are going to see how we are going to articulate this strategy. This is not, talk about, it's not talking about talking. I've not been doing videos before. Have you been seeing me doing videos? No. My videos making started in February 2018 when I told myself that no, no is no. With the way the country is running. But now that we have started, there's no going back. There's no going back. So 2019, no voting for any senators. We know that the senators will never amend the law to dissolve the Senate. Therefore, we must use our voters' card to solve that issue. Nigerians, go and collect your voters' card now. Recycled politicians, former, present, governors, resort forgers, ritualists, and other corrupt elements warning, warming up to contest for Senate in 2019, be wisely informed. Nigerians will not vote for that position of senators in 2019. Number eight, we demand that since the government has started publishing the names of treasury looters, they must complete it by publishing the full list. That list is not complete. We want a full list of persons that have stolen and brought this hunger and insecurity to our country. Number nine, we are demanding that the running cost of the executives must be published and reviewed in line with the Nigerian law. Number 10, we are demanding that all persons whose names were published as looters of public treasury must be as arrested, speedily tried, and banned from holding public offices. Number 11, we are demanding that no police officer must be assigned to any politician or so-called VIP. They should hire private security guards. You cannot use most of our police officers to, 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 to protect treasury looters while the rest of us are organizing burial, mass burial for families. No. We cannot continue like that. Number 12. We demand a ban on health tourism for all public office holders. You cannot be taking our money abroad to pay medical bills when you refuse to build and develop our hospitals. When even comedian uh, uh, Igodai is building an hospital in his village for his people, a comedian, 
But people with his own money, hard earned money, but people who are in position of authority are stealing the money and, and patronizing hospitals outside the country. Now, if the government of Nigeria does not comply with our demands, as stated, this is what will happen in Nigeria. By 7 a.m. of 1st October 2018, as President Muhammadu Buhari is reading his usual independent speech, I will be simultaneously reading my speech and releasing it through this channel. Immediately after my speech, Nigerians will be let loose into the street to demand for what was stolen from us that has kept us where we are now as a country. This ultimatum starts from today. Therefore, between today, 15th May, and 31st September 2018, we have 138 days. These demands must be met without any form of negotiation. Since all Nigerian embassies will be officially closed by 1st October to celebrate the previous Nigerian independence, on Wednesday, 3rd October, Nigerians abroad must mobilize. They must mobilize through their respective ECSDN coordinators and march to all Nigerian missions to submit our letter. Henceforth, any public officer you see anywhere, just shout no. Keep shouting no. Don't stop shouting no, they will understand. Start to print on your t-shirts. Begin to open offices now of ECSDN, all the wards, all the 774 local government areas of Nigeria. Start to open your wards. If you're already a coordinator, be in charge of your ward. For those abroad, form it in all your cities. We have work to do together as we speak to you on the 15th of every month till the next election. As you form the movement in your world in Nigeria, send us an email listing all your members and your mobilizers. We are not going to have executives because that will bring competition. We shall have just one coordinator in every world and the others shall be called mobilizers. As the next election draws near, remember this, if a politician gives you money, take the money, but do not walk or vote for them. They are cursing you if you work for them. For example, if you receive 5,000 Naira from your voter's card, somebody pays you 5,000 Naira and takes your voter's card from you, or you vote for somebody because he gave you 5,000 Naira, or you sold your conscience, this is, just do, check this calculation. That person will be in office for four years. Four years is 1,460 days. That 5,000 Naira divided by 1,460 days is less than four Naira a day, which cannot even buy you pure water. After that, you cannot ask any politician to provide any social amenities for you. Does it make sense? No. So go, start your pre printing your t-shirts. Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea, ba Baka France. Pull your club t-shirt. Begin to make t-shirts now. No. Wherever you are, start printing the t-shirt. Wear it publicly. It is legal to say no to oppression. Taylor, mechanics, organizer, carpenter, petroleum marketers, National Union of Road Transport Workers, wood sellers, association of different associations in Nigeria. Pick a day from every two weeks. Lock your shop or your trading places either throughout the day or for six hours. Do this once every two weeks to the next election. When you close the shop, print on a banner or write on a board. Just write N-O, no. Whoever sees it will understand why you close your shop. And we have to start telling others about this now. These are just some of the strategies. Niger Delta militants, join this revolution. The money you receive monthly will not come forever. That was not what Ken Sarewiwa fought for. Nigerian Labour Congress, we have been waiting for you. Nigerian Union of um, Trade Union Council, Association of Nigerian Students, let it be on record that in your time, you work to change Nigeria. We have been waiting for you to act against the killing and corruption going on. Your silence is too loud. 